Welcome back. This is the second of the two videos I'm creating. Uh, the first one was about the course, at least giving a minor introduction to the course, and this video will be a little bit about myself. Uh, so I don't want you to feel like you are learning history from a perfect stranger. I want to give you a little bit of information about me and tell you about where I've come from and how I approach history and, and well, just a little bit so you feel like you at least kind of know me. I always introduce myself to my students in my uh, in-person courses, so why should you guys be any different? So a little bit about myself. Oh, and before I tell you, I just want to point out to you, although you've probably already seen it, uh, I have a discussion board set up uh, on Canvas right now. It's not graded, and it's for you to tell me a little bit about yourself, uh, whether you are uh, what your major is, what your goals are, what your dreams are, where you're from. Uh, what year you are in school, how long you've been in school, if you're a traditional student, uh, somebody who is of, of the traditional college age, or if you're somebody who is returning to college, somebody who maybe served in the military or is starting a new career or is simply taking classes for their own personal interest. So I hope that I can get to know who you are and uh, your classmates can get to know who you are and also that you can get to know who I am by watching this video. I think it's important to have at least some minor resemblance of a community here. I know that the class is online, and a lot of us take online classes so we can kind of get around that need to always be in class with people, and we can kind of work at our own pace and teach at our own pace. Uh, but I think that having a certain degree of community is still important because we are going to be in many ways working together. I will be working with you, and you will be working with me, and so it's good to uh, know a little bit about each other. So let me tell you, without further ado, a little bit about myself. So I was born in Cleveland, Ohio. Well, let me rephrase that. I was born on the west side of Cleveland, Ohio, in a small uh, manufacturing city named Elyria. Uh, but most of the people, at least of my age group, consider ourselves to be mm, Clevelanders to people who don't know where Elyria is or what Elyria is. So for all intents and purposes, let's just say I am from Cleveland, Ohio. Uh, I'm 32 years old, and it's a great city to come from because it certainly has, has fair shares of downs and maybe not as many ups as we would like. Uh, we've been shoved to the ground a number, a number of occasions. It's sort of like a tradition. Uh, shoved around by others, shoved around by luck, shoved around by fate, and occasionally we shoot ourselves in the foot as well. Uh, but it's the kind of place that when you get used to it, you come up on top, you just learn to soldier on, learn to get back up, learn to keep, learn to uh, keep walking forward. Uh, as I believe LeBron James had said when the uh, Cavaliers won the championship back in 16, uh, nothing, is, uh, nothing is given given here. Everything is worked for. And uh, I bring that approach to all the work that I do, whether it's work in history or work uh, in the theater or work in anything else I've done. And I hope that you will bring that approach as well. My philosophy on history, at least as far as this course goes, is that while I don't guarantee you an A, I don't guarantee you any grades. The grades that you earn are the grades that you earn. However, if you put forth the effort, if you work hard, if you try, you will improve. And if you work hard enough, you will pass. Uh, we will work together on this. So let's bring this kind of blue collar, um, blue collar stoicism that I was raised with here in this city uh, to this work that we do here. And let's just keep striving forward. Let's try to learn. Let's try to improve ourselves and walk out with something that can be useful to us in the future. So I am from the west side of Cleveland, Ohio. As an undergraduate, I went to a small liberal arts college on, in northeast Ohio on the east side of Cleveland, about 45 minutes outside the city and about 45 minutes away from another city uh, called Akron. And Akron actually is where LeBron James is from. Uh, this is Hiram College, a beautiful college, very small, very rural, as you can see. A uh, gorgeous place to be. It's in the snow belt, so we get snow as early as October out there, uh, which just foreshadows all the snow we get for the rest of the year. 
Uh, and uh, our most famous, uh, our most famous uh, student at uh, Hiram, the most famous alumni, is James A. Garfield, who one day became president of the United States, and he also was a Union general as well. Uh, a little bit of trivia about James A. Garfield. James A. Garfield, uh, if you know who he is, if not, look him up. He is a very interesting man. Unfortunately, he was assassinated, but he would have been perhaps one of the best presidents we ever had had he lived. Uh, he was an abolitionist. He believed in equality of everybody regardless of race. He was educated in Greek, Latin, and mathematics, as well as philosophy. He is the only president to ever uh, be elected. Uh, he's the only president who has ever been an ordained minister. He was a minister in the Disciples of Christ uh, denomination of Christianity. He was our first left-handed president. And according to popular myth, uh, mostly given to us by his wife. He was able to write Greek with his left hand while he wrote Latin with his right at the same time. I don't know how true that is, but I just find that a very interesting story. I am left-handed as well, so I, I kind of like that little bit of quirky history. So this is where I went to undergraduate school, and I earned degrees in history and theater. I mostly did theater for most of my life uh, as a high school student and for the first few years of my college career. I uh, was an actor, I also did writing, and I was trained as a stage manager, and I've done some stage management work for smaller professional shows. And uh, when I graduated from high school, I did get into schools like Ohio State and that, but I also uh, received admission to the American Musical and Dramatic Arts Academy, or AMDA, in New York and Los Angeles, where I was hoping to get at least a two-year degree, if not a four-year degree, <clears throat> in studio acting, uh, which essentially is just mostly non-musical theater. I do, I can do musicals, I can sing, but my voice is not particularly strong. Uh, mostly I was non-musical. Unfortunately, I had some health problems and that coupled with the cost of such an education uh, made me choose a little bit more of a conservative route. Uh, so I started doing writing and I started doing stage management as well. And then I moved more and more towards history, which always had been a love for me anyway, and literature as well. But nevertheless, I did get a double major in history and theater. I shifted gears after I graduated from Hiram and left the North entirely and went to the South. I received a master's degree from Clemson University, the great school of South Carolina, Clemson University uh, in the upstate. I was there between 2010 and 2012, uh, where I had the privilege, uh, comically, of having lunch with Dabo Sweeney, the coach of the Clemson football team, purely by accident, though. Uh, I was just sitting at a table one day, and there must have been some kind of athlete recruiting thing going on because all the athletes, uh, male athletes and female athletes from all the different sports were walking around wearing suits and ties. And uh, I was just sitting there having lunch and I heard this loud booming voice uh, just right in front of me. And I looked up and Dabo Sweeney is looking right at me wearing his hat, <coughs> wearing his coat. And uh, he was just, he just asked me why I wanted to come to this school and play football for this program. And I absolutely had no idea what to say to him, but he was so direct and so forceful with his question that I just had to lie and tell him that it was the best place. I thought it was the best school for the, for my education and, uh, and for football. And he, he bought it. So that uh, was a very odd, awkward, but comically interesting uh, scenario. So I went there, got a degree in history, a master's degree, and I moved on back to Ohio where I worked in the theater for about a year, and I decided I wanted to get a PhD. So I applied to a number of schools. Uh, I got into three of them, uh, University of North Carolina, Greensboro, University of Alabama, and Mississippi State University. Although I was going to go to Mississippi State, uh, I was I was really close to choosing to go with them, uh, reasons again with my health, but also uh, the comfort of being back in the Carolinas. Uh, the, the wonderful uh, professors at the University of North Carolina, the undergraduate students uh, made me want to go back to Carolina. So I returned to North Carolina this time. I've been here since 2013. Uh, I a little bit slowed down because of, again, those health issues and also um, had to change my dissertation topic. But I am very happy that I've gone here, and hopefully I will defend my dissertation in the spring. Uh, if not the summer, I might even graduate in the spring, but uh, worst case scenario is I'll graduate next spring. So if not 2020, then 2021. Uh, it just depends on what editing I'd still need to do as I soldier forward. 
My work primarily revolved around social reform. It's kind of a broad topic, but all that means is that I studied things like abolition, women's uh, suffrage movement, uh, certain labor uh, reforms, uh, the union movement, things like that. It's kind of a broad catch-all term, but mainly what I studied <clears throat> excuse me, mainly what I study is abolition and more specifically radical abolition, radical religious abolition. People like John Brown, who's the gentleman you see here in the front. This is a mural of him. He fought uh, uh, slaveholders in Kansas and uh, most famously or infamously uh, led a or tried to lead a revolt in West well, what is today West Virginia, what would have been time Western Virginia, at a place called Harper's Ferry in 1859, which is considered in many ways kind of the unofficial beginning of the Civil War. Uh, he was later hanged for that. I studied, uh, uh, I studied groups like Oberlin and Oberlin College, sort of a utopian community near where I grew up that was the first school in the country to educate whites and blacks equally in the same school and offer uh, black people baccalaureates, also women baccalaureates. So white men, white women, and black men and black women could go to Oberlin and receive the exact same education, and they were treated the exact same way. Uh, at least as far as the 19th century would allow. Western Reserve College uh, and other communities in Massachusetts, Connecticut, upstate New York, and Northeast Ohio. So really that's what I primarily looked at when I was at Hiram and when I was at Clemson. Uh, I shifted gears though for a number of reasons, and now I study, right now at least what I'm doing my dissertation on, is divine healing or faith healing after the Civil War from these kind of smaller splinter groups, some of, which, some of whom were abolitionists, who kind of took their uh, zeal to the next level. Uh, more specifically, I'm not really looking at it as far as the theology goes, but as, as a form of alternative medicine. So you could say that I do social reform history, uh, abolition, I do temperance, I do uh, some elements of class conflict and labor, uh, though not as much as others, but I also do alternative medical history, medical and alternative medical history. Uh, as well. So I, I have kind of a broad approach. If you wanted to ask me just simply what I did, I would say social reform history, mainly abolition and alternative medicine. So long story short, that's what I do, abolition and alternative medicine. I do the other things as well, but those two in particular are what I do uh, the most. I also do uh, uh, some kind of minor stuff on the side for personal interests. I study jazz, I study cinema, I study theater. And I study uh, amusement parks and leisure as well. All of these um, seem somewhat seem very different from each other, but there are connections, believe it or not, if you if you look, especially in the era when this stuff came out of. So that's who I am. That's who I am. I, that's a lot of information, perhaps more than you wanted to know, but at least you know it, and and uh, you know who I am, and you know where I come from. I look forward to getting to know who you are uh, in our in the discussion post uh, that I told you about, the one where you introduce yourselves, and I'm looking forward to getting to know you uh, over the course of the semester. So without further ado, please go to the syllabus if you haven't so, done so already. Read the syllabus. Uh, read it over carefully. Make sure all your notifications are turned on. Take the syllabus uh, exam, the agreement form that is, and then move to the first week and the first lecture and I hope that uh, you enjoy this class and have a good experience with it. So with that, I will leave you to your class, and I look forward to seeing you in the coming weeks as you listen to these lectures and we learn about this very um, dynamic period of history. Have a good evening.